As the trailer to Star Trek Nemesis once said, for every force in the universe, there is an opposite. Kind of funny to reference that movie in a video about the top 10 worst of the year. But that is to say, when I make a top 10 best movies of the year list, I gotta make a top 10 worst movies of the year list. It's funny, as time has gone on, I feel like the, the concept of making a top 10 worst list has become taboo. You're not supposed to. But as the great philosopher Airman Trout once said, Yeah, well, I enjoy it. So sit back, relax, pour a beverage, water, or otherwise, let's celebrate the top 10 worst movies of 2023. Funny enough, there's a movie I'm actually going to omit from this list, because I, I went in pretty hard on Five Nights at Freddy's in my review. But as I say, comment below, let me know. Plot twist, I do read the comments in my videos. Feedback is important. I saw a lot of comments that were like, yeah, the movie was messy, but the games are messy. And that's what the movie was supposed to be. To me, it sounds like a bit of cope. Doesn't change the fact that it seems like Five Nights at Freddy's the movie did land with fans of the franchise. In large part anyway, and in a world where a lot of these big studios or movies uh, betray the properties. When a movie does right by fans, I feel like that should be celebrated. So live long and prosper, Five Nights at Freddy's. I will see you in the sequel. Also in a world where it was tough for me to make the top 10 best list to find 10 movies that I liked that much, this was difficult in a much different way. I had to whittle it down in a world where there are about 15 bangers that could have been on this list. So not having to deal with one more, that, that's, that's the thing I'm doing for myself as well. Full transparency. Also, these are not reviews for the movies. We're just gonna briefly touch on why they're bad. I do have reviews of all of these movies. If you wanna check out the reviews. Let's not stand on ceremony. Let's get this bus fire going with number 10. Number 10. I'm just gonna start this out with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. A movie when I watched, I was like, all right, there were some enjoyable things in it. Maybe with a bit of booze. It didn't make it better, by the way, so I was just wrong about that. That rating just seems very flawed once again. Another MCU movie that has cameos that feel like cheap sitcom cameos. Boiling it all down, it's just you had something that worked with the first Ant-Man movie, and they just, it's like they forgot all about it. The movie's too big for Ant-Man's britches. It's as simple as that. Compounding with the fact, this is actually what made it on the list, is... I continually forget about MODOK being in this movie. It's so strange. I'll see a movie, I'll talk about it with friends, and they'll be like, better or worse than Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. And I'll be like, oh, it's probably worse. And their response is always, is there anything in that movie that's worse than MODOK? And I'm always like, oh my God, I forgot about MODOK. No, the answer is no. It's the worst thing in a comic book movie in 2023. How does my brain just pull it out and forget about it? It's like, Horace Slughorn sorcery or some shit. I always forget about MODOK and then I remember MODOK and the movie's just worse. You know what was better than this movie and MODOK? The Flash. Number nine. Next up, Aquaman and the... Lost Kingdom? Th yeah. Don't worry, after this, I never have to try to remember the title of this movie again. Aquaman 2 is actually kind of an interesting thing that's lived in my head for about a week. I do not believe the movie we saw in theaters was the movie James Wan made or set out to make. I feel like Aquaman 2 to James Wan is Alien 3 to David Fincher. If you believe the reports, that's exactly what it sounds like. This movie was supposed to be, well, something cohesive, something that made sense. But the final cut of the movie just jumps around it. I splashed my scotch on me. Yeah. Waste not. The final cut of the movie felt like Edward Scissorhands got his hands on it or something. Just sliced it to shit. I just feel like we've seen enough good from James Wan to know that this is not how he does it. If this is the last movie in your DCEU before the reboot, I don't know why you just don't let the guy make the movie he set out to make. None of it's gonna lead to anything anyway, so just let it happen. Number eight. Next up, it's a Megalodon, part two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the first Meg, you can say, oh, it's just dumb fun. This Meg movie was just dumb bad. Dollar Store Leviathan, Dollar Store Abyss. Though I am glad to know 20,000 feet below the surface without a suit, all you need to do to keep from being crushed from the water pressure is clear your sinuses. I get campy fun for the sake of campy fun, but you gotta lean into it more than this movie did. It wasn't fun. It was just trash. Number seven. Next up, the MCU strikes again with the Marvels. How someone who has the power to reignite a dying sun by flying through it would struggle in any fist fight whatsoever. 
Well, that's beyond me. But she is struggling against the most forgettable villain in MCU history, so there's that. This movie was a mess. Bad CGI, bad green screen, cheesy SNL comedy bits about cats slurping people up and vomiting them out for the sake of getting them off the space station, or a planet of people who sing. I feel like when a documentary is made about the movies of this time, some years or decades from now, looking back. We're gonna learn the truth about how much AI played a role in writing this shit. Till then, we just gotta call it how it is. Which is why these lists are important. Number six. Speaking of AI possibly and probably making trash, let's talk about Wish. Wish, the chat GPT screenwriting test run known as Generic, a fantasy adventure. I think me talking about AI writing this shit is my way of trying to believe that people didn't write it. They can't be that lazy, right? No way an entire act of Bruce Almighty that illustrates granting everyone's wish is probably irresponsible went over a human being's head. The cinematography was boring. There was no sense of art to it. It didn't feel like fantasy. The side friend characters were forgettable. It felt like they had a movie and someone was like, well, we need a group of side friend characters. 2023 was a year that Disney felt the squeeze. We need to try crazy concept. People have been telling them that for years, but now they know financially. It's wild to see the contrast between Disney animation when they were in their prime, in their heyday, to now, to this. Number five. Next up, The Exorcist Believer, which could have been pretty cool. And in fact, when the movie was starting out, I was like, all right, it's going a different direction. Feels like they're trying to flesh this out. Give it a shot. Turns out it was one of the most generic fucking Exorcist movies I've ever seen in my life. Which is what I'm talking about when I say disappointment. Generic Exorcist movies, dime a dozen. When a generic Exorcist movie is a sequel to The Exorcist, dude, also has Ellen Burstyn in it. Dude, it was when they made her useless. That's when the movie truly nosedived for me. I was like, okay, she's in this movie to have her in the trailer to get asses in the seats. Number four. Next up, Retribution. Do you remember Retribution? I didn't until I was looking through my reviews of the year, coming up with my top 10 list. And I was like, what was that? Wow. Well, that sounds bad per what I was saying about it. After my review, I did remember it. Somewhat, I remember it being nonsensical, illogical ass. Bullshit physics jumps the shark like a motherfucker at one point. Good for Liam Neeson still getting those paychecks, still riding the wave from the first Taken movie. That's impressive. But this is one of those straight to Walmart bin movies. I don't know how it got a theatrical release, but there I was sitting in a theater. Number three. Next up, Children of the Corn. Barely remember this one either. However, it was a weird thing that was always there on my mind, like, like a little post-it note. When people would come up to me, I'd run into people at theaters. It's like one of the, it's one of the questions people like asking me, what's the worst movie of the year? And usually I'm not good at that. I'm not used to being like, oh, hey, here are the top five. Or the, I, I'm just, I usually have my mind on other things. So I would have to whip out my phone and be like, all right, let me go through my reviews and see what I've reviewed this year. Not with Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn was always there. I always had that to pull from. And I'd always be like, well, Children of the Corn sucked ass. I, it was just my go-to answer. I always knew it, I always remembered it. And then a CGI corn monster, when in the book it's implied to be Randall Flagg, possibly. But that would have been kind of cool. I didn't need to see a corn monster, just have something in there that could be Randall Flagg. Intrigue me a little bit. Less would have been more. But not sure, CGI corn monster by the end. Why not, who doesn't love that? Number two. Man, the top two is the difference between bad and disappointing. I'm opting for disappointing being number one. So number two, Expendables 4. Feels like forever since I saw this movie. Turns out it was about three months ago. Wild. Sometimes time flies, sometimes it just drags. But Expendables 4, it was truly awful. What was once a celebration of the action stars of yesteryear became a cartoon version of itself. Again, there's leaning into cheese for the sake of fun, for the sake of the celebration of action films. And then there's just a massive waste of time. This is that second one. There's been some bad green screen in 2023. A lot of which are on this list. Expendables 4 had the worst of it. Holy shit, it dawns on me. Two Jason Statham movies on this list. To be fair, Jason Statham does feel like the one carrying this movie. He's the one not sleepwalking to the end. When you have martial arts legends like Eco Weiss and Tony Jaa in, this, in an action movie and you waste them 
and the action is still this bad. No, nope. it's terrible. Number one. Number one, and I will say right now, is this objectively the worst? Well, that's subjective. My brother and I have a tradition at this point. We will pick a movie that's bad. Usually it's, I have to determine the movie because I'm the guy who watches the movie. So it's me double dipping on bullshit. But we'll watch the bad movie. We'll talk shit while sipping scotch. Already been decided. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the next movie in that tradition. This movie had a lot going for it, man. James Mangold was directing. He's one of the best directors working right now, in my opinion. Harrison Ford was back in the end. They just brought Indiana Jones back to make him this sad, old, broken, grumpy man on this adventure. <laughs> well, they Han Soloed him, like I said in my review. Maybe it was a spoiler talk video, but I guess that's what you do with Harrison Ford characters now. Have this great, iconic, roguelike adventurer. Bring him back. Make him a grumpy, old, broken man whose life has just fallen apart. And then fuck him more. Again, with that documentary in the year 2035, looking back at movies of this era. I want to know the story behind this. Never saw Phoebe Waller-Bridge before. Saw her in this movie. Her character was an asshole. When anyone has to self-describe themselves, pump themselves up to other people. Resultful, daring, beautiful, self-sufficient. These movies are written by people who apparently think Gaston from Beauty and the Beast is likable. Cause that's how he would talk about himself. That's right, Belle, I'm resourceful, daring, beautiful, self-sufficient. The chase sequences felt too sterile, too clean. Everything was too CGI. It didn't feel daring. It didn't feel like indie. Every other Indiana Jones movie is better than Dial of Destiny. And that includes Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And that's why it's the number one disappointment of 2023. Thus to me, it's the worst of 2023. So there they are. There you have it. Those are the 10 movies in 2023 that turned me into a grumpy Dick. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. And once again, like I said in my previous video, thank you once again for making another year of me on YouTube possible. We press forward to 2024, which <laughs> let's be honest, is probably going to be a trash fire. That's election year, dude. Out there, it's going to get ugly. In here, we just talk movies and that's fun. So your list of the top 10 worst or disappointing movies of 2023. Whatever they are, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.